Pollock struggled to his hands and knees. The pain spikes were so much junk, like everything else in the room. All the illumination in the chamber was dead. The sun was over the horizon, and the light of early morning shone through the aperture of the promontory, highlighting curls of smoke. Shakily, he got up. He plucked the wrecked spikes from his interface ports and shattered his bonds with his Emperor-given strength. He limped through the wreckage-strewn tuning floor towards the still form of the warsmith, his friend. Brother Dantioch, he said. Barabbas! He cradled the warsmith in his arms, and hope bloomed in him. Dantioch lived for the moment. The Oyan warrior's mask lay on the floor, and so Pollux looked upon a face he had never seen. Dantioch was older than he expected. Lines of pain were etched into his scarred face that nothing could erase. His eyes opened. They moved sightlessly, blinded by the intense flare of the pharos. Alexis, he whispered. I am here, Barabbas. The warsmith clutched at the arms encircling him. I never thought to call one such as you, friend. He smiled. You are my friend, Barabbas, and my teacher. I am dying. You will live, Pollux said fiercely. Dantioch shook his head. Pollux wished he had water to give him. Anything. His croaking voice became insistent. Listen to me. I saw such things in the light. This war is only the beginning. He swallowed, and his throat clicked painfully. The beginning of the end. Dantioch gasped and settled back, his strength finally leaving him. But I am glad, Alexis. I am glad to have been. I am glad to have known you. It is something that friendship can exist at all in this universe of terror and betrayal. Quiet now. You must save your strength. Antioch's scarred mouth cracked into a smile. I have no strength left. I have done my duty, and I am no longer ashamed. His back arched in pain and he gasped. All hail, the Emperor of Mankind, still beloved by all. May his dream be saved. Even if we cannot. A long, rattling breath escaped him, and his face stilled. Dantioch's body went limp in Pollux's arms. Barabbas! cried Pollux. Barabbas! Brother! He bent his head and wept for his enemy, his friend. Tenderly, he crossed Dantioch's arms upon his chest, as befit a champion of the legions who had fallen in service to the Imperium. The warriors of Ultramar would find Pollux there, hours later, his head still bowed in mourning. But first to other matters. How is our friend, Captain Pollux? They looked over at the Imperial Fist, sitting, immobile, by his friend in the center of the chamber. Someone had draped a blanket around his shoulders, but otherwise he remained as he had been found, motionless with grief. Refusing food, water, or help, he does not move since we came here, but sits in vigil. Well, that will not do. Pollux, Gilliman called raising his voice. Pollux looked up. I command you to rise, Captain Alexis Pollux of the Imperial Fists, ordered Gilliman. 
he stood, the blanket slipping from his shoulders. By Lord Gilliman. It is time to let us take care of the warsmith. We shall commemorate his deeds this evening, as night falls, in a manner befitting a true hero of the Imperium. The Imperial Fist nodded dumbly. Suzerain guards came to him, carrying a beer. They made to raise Dantioch up, but Pollux stopped them. No, said Pollux, softly but dangerously. None shall touch him. I will carry him, for he was my brother. Up stone steps lined by Invictorous suzerains they filed, through the broken gates of the redoubt, thence to the wider platform surmounting the top. At the far end, away from the gun emplacement and nested arrays of astronomical instruments, was a pyre of dried quick tree wood. Atop it, his armor battered, but his face serene, lay the body of warsmith Barabbas Dantioch. Gilliman stopped by the pyre, his great statue allowing him to look down upon the dead warrior. You have not replaced the mask, he said. It was a symbol of shame to him, said Pollux. He wore it as a constant reminder of his legion's betrayal. He no longer has anything to be ashamed of. That he does not. Gilliman held out his hand. Captain Kashmir placed a golden torch into his grip. A hot flame burning true in the horn in the end. Gilliman presented it to Pollux. The honor should be yours. My lord, if it pleases you. It would be a far greater honor done to Barabbas if it were you. The mightiest of the Emperor's sons, who sends him on his way. Very well, said Gilliman, nodding in deference. With a crackle of parting wood, he thrust the torch deep into the quick tree pyre. They stepped back as the fire caught. Tongues of flame curled around the body of Dantioch, blackening his armor, licking at his scarred flesh amidst pillars of scented smoke that carried heavenwards. Company! bellowed the foremost of Gilliman's guards. So passes Dantioch! Hero of the Imperium! They roared and discharged their bolt guns. The weapons boomed as they launched their projectiles, the propellant igniting and sending them fizzing into the sky, banking again as they breached the sound barrier. So passes Dantioch, Hero of the Imperium! So passes Dantioch, hero of the Imperium. The sky darkened. The pyre of Barabbas Dantioch bathed his comrades in heat and light. The last rays of the sun struck the pharos. Red beams glowing in the cave mouths of flank and peak. No return light shone in reply and nor did it ever again. The song of the mountain was done, and night fell on Imperium Secundus for true. <laughs>